Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a logarithmic equation with complex numbers. We'll talk about complex logarithms, we'll talk about complex exponentiation, Euler's number, Euler's formula, polar form, so on and so forth. So many things, right? So this problem might look very easy to some of you, but if you're new to complex numbers, make sure to check out my lecture videos as well as other playlists where I kind of try to sort problems into three different categories. Easy problems, medium problems, and hard problems. I haven't done very many hard problems. I have quite a few medium level problems, but just let me know what you think if you don't like the categorization that I made or if you have a different idea, let me know. Anyways, I would probably consider this a medium problem even though it kind of looks on the easier side, sort of. Anyways, we have this equation ln z equals ln 2 plus i times pi over 6. This is a pretty interesting equation in my opinion because it contains a complex number and not only that, the log, the natural log of a complex number and then it contains a real valued natural log, the natural log of 2 right and then it contains an imaginary number i and that's multiplied by an irrational number and also a transcendental number and that's divided by integer anyways just a jumbo mumbo okay so how do you find z from here if you know this uh, what this means you're gonna have a really quick idea and a lot of times we use this idea in my videos you've seen it probably if you watch these uh, my other videos if you haven't Go ahead and watch them. Why not, right? <laughs> what are you waiting for? So here's the idea. We need to talk about a couple different things. For example, how do you ln a complex number? I mean, if I told you, how do you ln e? Easy. It's base e, so ln e is ln log e with base e, which is 1. Or how do you ln e squared? Well, we have a power rule. We can bring it to the front, and this becomes 2 ln e, which is 2. Okay, those are easy. What about ln 5? Well, you can use a calculator for that. Or you can kind of compare this to any power of e, and you can find an approximate value, so on and so forth, right? Anyways, these are all real numbers. But how do you ln 1 minus i? I mean, it's not a real number, so how do you do that, right? So for that one, we do need the definition of the natural log of a complex number. And let me go ahead and give you that definition so we can solve this problem and let's go ahead and call this the first method okay so the first method is going to be the following i'm going to go ahead and give you the formula for the log of a complex number or the complex logarithm and then we're going to use it to solve this problem so how do you log a complex number so if the complex number can be written as r e to the i theta where r is the modulus or absolute value and theta is the argument or the angle, right? We can go ahead and find ln z this way. ln r plus i times theta. Of course, theta can take infinitely many values because it has a period of 2 pi. So when you add multiples of 2 pi to it, then you're going to have the same angle, but just expressed differently, okay? Multiple branches, in other words. So, in other words, instead of just settling uh, for theta, we can go ahead and just add multiples of 2 pi to this, like 2 pi n, and this will still work. But let's go ahead and keep it simple for now, and then you can kind of think about different variations, right? So, what is the, how does this compare to my equation? Take a look. I know that ln z is equal to ln 2 plus i times pi over 6, right? This is my equation. But ln z can also be written like this if z is equal to that. So if I replace ln z with this, then I'm going to be getting ln r plus i theta equals ln 2 plus i times pi over 6. Now from here, I can safely say that r is equal to 2. Well, wait a minute. Can I say that? What if ln r is equal to i pi over 6? No, that's not going to happen because ln r is real r is greater than or equal to zero it's the modulus and this is always a real valued logarithm make sense so this association is false so we kind of have to do it differently 
uh, which means ln r needs to be the same thing as ln 2, which implies that r is equal to 2. Okay, so r is equal to 2, I know that. Now let's go ahead and find theta. Shouldn't be too hard, right? Well, the imaginary parts are equal. This is another reason why the other type of association will not work because when you, two complex numbers are equal, that means their real parts are equal and then the real parts cancel out and that ends up with imaginary parts being equal. Make sense? So this is our conclusion and guess what? Z can be written as R e to the i theta, therefore R is 2, theta is pi over 6 and now Z is gonna be this number. But wait a minute, what is that supposed to mean? I don't know what E means, right? E is Euler's number, and we can write a complex number in polar form. So let's go ahead and talk about Euler's formula. Euler's formula says E to the power I theta can be written as cosine theta plus I sine theta, or the other way around, right? And this is a beautiful, beautiful finding by Euler because Euler is amazing, right? Do you agree? So this is the formula. And now I can go ahead, wait a minute, where is R? Well, if you just attach an R here, then you'll multiply both sides by R, but that's not gonna make a huge difference. So now this means cosine pi over six plus I times sine pi over six. What is cosine pi over six? Cosine pi over six is the same as cosine 30 in degrees, and cosine 30 is root three over two, and sine pi over six is sine 30, which is one half. If you multiply by two, you get root three plus i for z, and that would actually be the solution and the only solution, right? What would happen if you change the theta around a little bit? I'm pretty sure you're going to explore that. But I gave you Euler's formula, we applied it to this scenario, and we got the solution. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the second method. Just trying to make it a little different or look a little different so it can qualify as the second method and you're going to decide if this is valid okay now this is our original equation now here's what you need to think if i'm given ln z then why not do e to the power ln z because what is e to the power ln z you know that e to the power z and ln z are inverse functions so this is actually equal to z so if you're trying to find z from here you should do e to the power both sides. That means you have to do e to the ln 2 plus i times pi over 6. Notice we're going in a different route and now this is going to give you z because e to the power ln z is z. And on the right hand side you can separate this into the real part and imaginary part. Actually that's not the case because e to the i pi over 6 still contains a real part. But anyways you get the idea. We have to separate the r and this is actually r. You know why? Because r e to the i theta. This is my theta. Oops. That's my theta. And this is my r. So what does that mean? e to the ln 2 is 2. So this is z equals 2 times e to the power i pi over 6. And i pi over 6, remember e to the power, that is root 3 over 2 plus i times 1 half. And that's going to give us the exact same value for z, root 3 plus i. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.